Welcome. So what I want to do is talk to you a little bit about why we have restrictions on our domain um, when we're solving rational equations, as well as what are extraneous solutions and how do we get them where they come at. Now, I don't know if you've taken, you know, depends if you've taken the, the graphing course yet or if you're about to take it, but one thing I want you to understand, when we're dealing with rational equations or the reciprocal, um, we're going to have these things called asymptotes or holes. And I'm not going to get very detailed um, into them but because that's more for the course on graphing. But one thing I want you to understand is when we're looking at something like that, and let's actually say here's a hole. Okay. So when we're looking at kind of like identifying the domain of a graph of a rational equation or a rational function, um, what I want you to understand is these dotted lines are what we call asymptotes. And that means our graph is not going to be a value at those um, lines. So here you can say that x cannot equal 2 at this value is an asymptote. And this is where the graph is going to approach. And I, you know, I have other videos on what exactly asymptotes are. And then you can also see that x cannot equal 3 because that's a hole. And there's a difference between holes and asymptotes. But their similarities are that both of them, your, uh, your uh, values, are not, they're not solutions of your equation. So let's go and look at, well, how do these even come about as an equation? Because I can kind of see, all right, in a graph, wherever there's that dotted line or there's an open circle, that's a hole. They're not a part of the solution. OK, I kind of get it. But how do we identify that in an equation, and how do we solve, find them? So we spend a lot of time when graphing is finding the holes and finding the asymptotes. But you have to have a general understanding when we're solving rational equations, because um, sometimes, even though we find a solution, our solution could be what the asymptote is or the whole. So we got to make sure we know how to identify them. And the best way to know how to identify them is with a um, basic understanding that sorry, a divided by 0 is undefined. Right? Anything divided by 0 is going to be undefined. You can't divide 0 into any number, no matter what the number is. So if we have this basic understanding, when we're looking at a rational equation, What we want to do when we're looking at a rational equation, even a crazy one like this, I just made it up. Um, but if we're looking at this, what we need to understand is, all right, well, if I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put restrictions on my domain, restrictions on my solution, saying this. I don't know what the answers are, but I know if I get the, when I get the answers, the answers cannot be these values. And the values that I'm going to choose are x cannot equal 1, x cannot equal 3, or negative 3 and x cannot equal negative 5. Now, why am I choosing these values? Well, if I take 1 and I plug it in for x, you can see that 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. Therefore, that is going to produce an undefined value, which we call an extraneous solution. If I plug negative 3 in for x, you can see here it's going to create 0. And if I plug negative 5 in for x, over here it creates 0. So anytime we have a value that is, can create 0 in our solution, it is either going to create an asymptote or a hole, and the solution is going to be extraneous. Now, the difference I'll go through real quick as far as a hole and an asymptote. Um, hole and asymptotes are very similar, but the difference between a hole and asymptote is we can actually factor out um, for instance, like if I had something like this with my equation, we can factor out the x plus 3, correct? Therefore, even though it's still a restriction, my value x can still not equal negative 3. However, it's going to produce a whole, not actually an asymptote. But why is this all important? Well, this is, again, important because when we go ahead and find our solutions, right? we're going to apply the operations to solve this rational equation. And once I get my values, I'm going to get you know, some certain answers. What I want to do is go back to my original constraints and say, all right, are any of my solutions these values? And if they are, our values are extraneous, and they're not actually going to be a part of them. So it's very important to check your answers. Go back to your original constraints and see if it was there. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is why we put restrictions on. And that is just a little bit of a definition of extraneous roots, as well as introduction to asymptotes and holes. Thanks.